Hello and welcome to the Grass Valley Training Center. I'm Olaf Barr and in this episode we're going to cover K2 Dyno Zoom and the hardware and software install for the K2 Summit. So let's get started. What comes in the box when you order a K2 Dyno Zoom is the USB key. Uh, this has software on it if you purchase this through Grass Valley as well as the activation key on there to make the uh, software work. The other thing that we have is the PCI bus. This card needs to be installed in the K2 Summit. We'll go through that next. Then we have the PCI cables. That's double-ended, so one end will go into the Summit on that PCI bus, and the other end goes into the DynaZoom Corvid Ultra. And then on the back of this box, I'll show you this up close, the connections required. This, of course, is included in the kit. Here again is where the PCI bus is, so that's where that cable will plug into. Uh, you have your four SDI ins, so we're, if we're only going to use 6x, we'll use the SDI input one in, and we'll use one SDI out. And uh, if we're going to do 4K, then of course we're going to use all four of these inputs and all four of these outputs. So these are actually coming from the summit, from the summit outputs going directly into this. So we take the clean feed and go into these spigots and this is what we feed the router or the switcher in, in whatever case or application. And then of course we need reference um, and we just do black burst, the same black burst that we're going to summit um, power, that's about it. So there's two T15 screws that we need to take out. These are star shaped. So I'll use my driver to pop these out. Power of course needs to be unplugged from the summit. Uh, recommended to use a static strap as, as well if you're in a s static environment. So here I use this little uh, metal piece to pull this out. So there we see that's where the slot is. We're going to take this out right here, this vent on the side. Pull that out. So that's all you need to take out. And then we're going to put the board in. So a couple different ways, you can either way load it from the side. I tend to pull this out and clearly lay the board in there. Do it this way as well. And then just line it up. Of course the inside and these connectors here need to all line up and give it a nice solid press. Good snap and you're in. Put in the set screw here back again on the side. hold that in and then put it all back together. So the last step is of course then again connecting this cable uh, from the PCI bus now on the back of the Dino Zoom box and the other end on the PCI card that we just installed. Uh, so that's it for hardware. Like I said there's cable connections that you have to take into consideration. Uh, the next step is going to be software. Um, but other than that uh, be aware this is a 15 foot cable and so these two units need to be at least within that reach uh, so that there's no strain uh, being put on these cables. So first off, we're gonna go ahead and enable McAfee to allow us to do the install. I'm gonna hear enter, get into update mode. Once we see that this is in update mode, uh, we can go ahead and close this and then proceed with the installation. Uh, because this actually this this program will become part of that whitelist, um, and then once we've uh, finished the install, then we'll want to enable McAfee again to protect that. So I've already taken the liberty of installing the software package onto the desktop here of the kind of Zoom. So I'm going to double click that to install, and we'll go through its process. We use the default location. We install everything that's required, the DynaZoom app as well as the NTV4 driver. Click finish. And you'll see on the desktop then this icon has been placed as a shortcut uh, for launching the tool. 
So don't forget that you also want to make sure that you enable McAfee again once you've completed the install. Uh, this way it gets added to the whitelist and it's preserved again. And then you protect it, of course, by enabling McAfee. Um, the next thing is, is that you're going to want to do a summit restart and uh, power it all the way down. The key here is also is that you don't connect um, those cable ends yet on the uh, hardware for the AJA um, prior to installing the software. So it really should be hardware installation, software installation, cable connection. That would really be the best result. You're going to end up taking it all the way down anyways. And then typically our power up sequence tends to be turn on the AJA box and then turn on the summit. And, and that seems to work out the best for us. Then I'm going to perform a shutdown of the summit. So the next step that I'm going to do is once the summit has completely powered down is I'm going to take that PCI cable and connect the two units together. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and turn on the dyno zoom box first. There's only a power button in the back. There's none on the front. So you get to turn the power on back there. And, uh, and then on the front face of this unit are five lights. They all come on. And, uh, and then once it's um, running, only power and reference basically are going to be solid. And then once I've started up the summit, then the link gets established and then I get a solid light for link as well. And then I know that I'm going. So now we need to do some configuration on the DynaZoom side, which is a software that's actually running on the summit. So let's get started there. So for the first time of running this application, we're going to double click on the DynaZoom shortcut. It'll launch to the bottom window here, to the taskbar. We can go ahead and click and open that. Go to the config. And this is where you're going to copy paste from the USB key, the text file, gives you this license key code. Drop that in there. And make sure that there is no space after the last letter uh, for that string. Otherwise, it won't work. And then you're going to want to just choose your settings. So how many inputs do you have? What your output settings are? Uh, and then just hit save, and you're good to go. Once we see here also that our input is green and our output is green, we know that the setup is done correctly for this unit. What's very important to understand is that we do not want to close this app. We want to minimize it. So every time that it's running, it sits here in the taskbar and it is actually running. We do not want to close that application or DinoZoom will not work in it with App Center. Sometimes when you first launch DinoZoom on the K2 Summit for the first time, prior to doing those configurations, you might get asked to do a firmware update. Um, they actually include the firmware updates in the new versions of software. And so when we install the new software, then of course it, it looks at the firmware that's on the system itself, on the unit, and says, hey, you're outdated, I need to perform an update. So you want to go ahead and perform those, uh, those firmware updates. Um, and then you might be required to go through that entire shutdown process again, uh, turn off the AJA. I actually unplug the unit, um, let 10 seconds go by and then plug it back in just to make sure all the juice is out of it. Um, and then go through that installation process um, and, and to its fullest extent. So, um, and then as you go through new versions or updates that come out that you can actually get from the, from the download sites, um, then, then those will include firmware updates again. So, so that pretty much concludes the hardware install and the software install on the Summit side. There are some tweaks that you have to do for uh, DinoZoom to actually work on the panel itself. Um, so we have clips for that uh, on YouTube. Right here, if you look up K2 Dino Replay in the search field, it'll actually come up with all of our little videos that we do. And one of them that you're looking for is K2 Dino Replay System DinoZoom Training. This will provide you with the steps necessary within App Center and the changes that you need to make in order to have a successful DinoZoom application. I'm Olaf Barr. Thank you for joining me. Until next time, take care.